All right, all right, my dudes, what's happening, man? This is Trent, and it is Wednesday. That is, that is, that means it's art day. That is, it is manana, but it's finally here. Today, we're going to be talking about social media. Everybody knows you got to be on social media if you're going to make some money today, if you're going to be like building your own business. This is especially true for artists. Now, you might not think it, but I'm actually a very shy person. I had to get over that to do this. Now, it wasn't always this way. It was actually pretty tough and intimidating, and, and I know all the things, all the reasons why you're probably thinking, I don't need to get on social media. It's too scary. Well, I'm going to try to help you make it a little easier for yourself. But first, a word from our sponsor. And that sponsor's me, baby. Yeah, I don't care about Skillshare. I don't care about League of Shadows or whatever. I wanna tell you about my tutorials. These are tutorials from beginners uh, with the Easy Art Lesson series to the Advanced Facility Workshop or Concept Art Workshops that I've got over there for characters and environments. Again, don't forget to use that 30% off coupon. You can see it on the screen above. Use that at the checkout. All right, dudes, let's talk about social media. Let's talk about why you need to have a YouTube channel, a Instagram channel, and a Twitter, and a Facebook, and as many others as you can possibly find the time to do, even if you're super shy and just afraid of being in the public eye. You gotta get over that. If you're gonna be a successful artist, you gotta get over your shyness. That's part of it. And I wanna preface this by saying you don't have to if you don't wanna build a business around your art. If you're just doing it for fun, like you don't have to do those things, but it is beneficial if you do decide, hey man, I, I wanna actually make a job out of this. I want to build a business around my art. Now, first of all, I schedule this every morning. So uh, it's one of the first things that I do. I go through my Twitter and then uh, I try to most of the day put it down until the evenings. But for the most part, every single day I am hitting it up and I'm trying to post at least a doodle or a sketch every one to two days. Now I know the optimal is like three to four times a day. I ain't got time for that. I got too many other things going on. So why is this important? Why does it matter? Well, it matters because Every single day, people who are interested in art are following people who are already feeding them more art. And if you are not, they don't even, you don't even come up on their radar. You're not available, so you don't show up. So it doesn't matter if you had something popular 10 years ago or if you just did the most baller painting you've ever done in your life. If it ain't on social media, then you don't exist at least in the eyes of the public, and if you want to have popular or product that you're selling, it just ain't gonna happen. You can't just count on making something awesome uh, tucked away in, in, you know, in the basement someplace or, or in your closet, you know? Like, you have to have that work out and available for people to see. Now, this doesn't have to be a daunting task. A lot of times people talk themselves out of it. It's like, nah, I gotta get a $2,000 camera and I gotta get the lighting equipment and I'm, I don't have like the office space and maybe there's just too much noise in my neighborhood. There's a lot of ways that you can make digital content, that you can make video content for YouTube, for instance, uh, without really disrupting too much of your time or schedule or even your wallet, you know? Uh, for example, a lot of people have a smartphone. These days, if you could just set up your smartphone above your drawing desk, for instance, and you can make yourself a nice, uh, two minute video, time lapse it, of whatever it is that you're drawing anyway. The same thing is true with your digital space. So if you're working in Photoshop or Sketchbook Pro or on your iPad, there are cheap or free screen capture programs like OBS for, uh, for Windows uh, and Mac, or I use uh, Camtasia to record all of my video content. There are a number of these. If you're on iPad, there's, a, there's several of them that are only a few dollars as well. So you can capture your screen and then export it as a video file, and then YouTube has a free music library. So you don't even need to talk on it. And I know this is really appealing for a lot of people out there who might be really intimidated thinking, I'm too nervous to talk about stuff on online with too many people listening. It's like too many voices, I can't, I can't keep track and it's just, it's intimidating, it's scary. And, and believe me, I know, man, I, I had to get over that when I, when I first started out and do not, do not under any circumstances watch my first videos because they are not particularly uh, good. Uh, I was very mumbly and I didn't know how to articulate my ideas very well and I didn't even know what people wanted. So I drank a little bit of whiskey, just a little bit, not too much, just a little bit of whiskey. Uh, and so until uh, somebody called me out on it and they're like, dude, uh, you look drunk in these videos, <laughs> which uh, yeah, it took the edge, uh, but maybe a little too much edge, you know what I'm saying? But I'll tell you what, in time, I started to get a lot more comfortable with just, you know, hitting record and just talking. Uh, but I don't recommend drinking alcohol to, to get over your nervousness. I, in fact, what I do recommend is that maybe you give a phone call to a friend, somebody that you're really comfortable with, and then while you're still on that energy of just feeling relaxed and comfortable talking about your thoughts, that's when you switch over to hitting record and uh, get off the phone, obviously, first, then hit record and start recording your commentary and you'll feel a lot more relaxed and comfortable because you're in that headspace still. So that's what I started doing and I found myself getting a lot more comfortable. And eventually people even started asking me, hey, what kind of uh, what kind of pencil are you using? And hey, what kind of a uh, program is that? And how do I do this thing that you were doing? And so when I used to think, well, I don't know what to say, which is what a lot of people 
why they don't do YouTube, for instance, I don't know what to say. Well, eventually people tell you what they want you to talk about, you know? So I highly recommend that. I highly recommend just recording your process, even if it's little snippets or something like that. Don't spend a ton of time on this. Do not plan to spend a ton of time on your social media channels. Just slowly integrate it into your process. When, uh, when I started my Instagram channel, I just started taking photos of whatever was, was on my screen or on my desk that I was working on at the time. It took literally 30 or 40 seconds to write up some hashtags and a little comment, and it just keeps your audience uh, interested in what you're doing. It keeps them, you're showing up to the party again, so you keep getting invited to the party, so to speak. But if you disappear and you're not on social media at all, it doesn't matter how popular your book was or whatever it is that you make, like people forget about you. So you kind of have to keep working it in as a part of your routine. And just like exercise or anything else that you want to keep building momentum at, you have to keep at it. And that doesn't require more than a few days a week that you're doing it. And with YouTube, I found like my comfort spot is about one to two videos a week. And I use a lot of templates so I don't have to keep remaking intros and, and title screens and things like that. I also try to make sure that I link all of my social media channels together. So like you'll see links in the description below. So when I do my couple of videos per week, I, you know, they pretty much get blasted out across all of my other channels as well. Sometimes just putting more energy into something doesn't mean that you're going to get more subscribers at it or something like that. So I kind of found that comfort zone. One of the things I'm working on is trying to be just a little bit more casual in my videos. I, I, people don't realize I spend seven to eight hours making a 10 minute video. And why is that? Because I am really putting a lot of thought into the topics that I discuss. I'm really trying to think about the perspective of the other people. And, and like if I talk about a person who's struggling with finances, I don't want anybody to feel awful about maybe taking a gamble on their finances to pursue art and maybe it didn't work out. And like, I don't want you to feel bad. It's like, I want to give you equipment and tools to empower yourself. So like that requires a lot of thought. It's not something I could just off the cuff throw out there, but I am trying to speed that up by making it more casual and just making it more comfortable. And that's the same advice that I would give to you. Like, you know, make it, make it easier. Just make it a little bit more comfortable. You know, you don't have to give it so much of your energy and you don't have to have too much of a high expectation either. I think if you put in a ton of work on a YouTube channel or an Instagram or something, and if you don't get the results that you were expecting, you might get discouraged. And so like, that's not as, uh, as rewarding as just building something slowly over time, chipping away at it. It's just part of my process to record everything that I do now. And it's part of my process that I take little snapshots on my phone throughout the whole painting process and then I post those on my social media. And that's why I think you, you really just need to incorporate it into part of your usual process. If you're gonna be drawing anyway, just set up a camera over your head and record that, put that out there. Two birds with one stone. And I'd go one step further and make it into a poster and put it out in all kinds of different ways, as many ways as you can possibly put it on a t-shirt and all that. And then you got 10 birds with one stone. Before you know it, you're a bird killer. You're taking out a whole flock with one stone. One stone. You're a bird killer, a maverick renegade bird killer. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing right now. This drawing is for the secrets of Kung Fulio. This is an illustrated novel in the Twilight Monk universe. And this is uh, also going to be in the world of Twilight Monk volume two, which is the second art book in the series. And if you want to read the story, you can get it for free. The first 2,500 downloads are free on the secrets of Kung Fulio. After that, I'm going to be adding the PDF with all kinds of artwork and images and an audio book version of it as well. So get that for free before it's gone. And dudes, until next time, I want to thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch y'all. I'm on yonder bond and ciao, baby. Oh yeah.